Hello and welcome to another day of Improvement Roulette. Just a few days in April left for us to get these tips out to you uh, in our daily live streams where we choose at random a business improvement tool, usually from the Leaner Six Sigma Toolkit and a random small business. Now today is a bit fun that we got a cannabis shop. So this is an industry that's really growing in the United States, in Oregon especially. Uh, so I thought it was an interesting type of business to throw in there. And we got the example of rolled throughput yield. So we're gonna talk a lot more about that today. We're gonna give you two examples, one generic and a little one a little bit more specific. I'm Amanda Zimmerman. I am a Lean Six Sigma Master Black Belt, and I've been helping people for the last 10 years make their processes better, safer, cheaper, faster, safer. Did I say that one already? <laughs> More efficient, essentially. So I'm excited to be able to bring those skills to you, bring some free trainings to you so that you can start applying these in your work so that you can get a little bit better each and every day. Now, as I said, the example that we are talking about today is rolled throughput yield. So when we talk about this, there's two terms that I want to clarify. So one is first pass yield. This is looking at each of our process steps, so each action and decision. How many products or services went into that step and how many came out without having to be reworked, without having a defect, without any problems? So what percentage of those went through first, the first pass, uh, with no problems. What's that percentage? That's your first pass yield. Rolled throughput yield is multiplying all those steps together to see overall how many items actually went through your process and were correct the first time. Now, this is hard to imagine, I think. At least it was for me the first time I started thinking about it. So if we think about a company, and just like I have here on the Excel screen, so we have a company that has, let's say, 10 items, and they are sending 10 products or services through five steps in their process. So when the 10 items hit that first process step, what happens is two of those items fail. So 80% of their items go through correct the first time through step A, but two of the items are defects. So we're gonna take those off. So now going into the next step, we don't have 10 items that go to the next step. We actually only have eight that go to that step B. So if we think of that again and say, okay, 80% of items in step B were good the first time. They didn't have any rework. We didn't have any problems with them. We didn't have to throw them out. 80%. Well, that's not 80% of 10. That's 80% of eight. So uh, if we look at that, then we can take two items off here that got scrapped again. Now we only have six items going to that third step, that step C. Now, if we think again that only 80% of these are actually going to go to the next step, then we can take one off. Step D, we're at 80% again. We're going to take another one off. Step E, three actually end up being good. So if we look at our steps, in this example, you can see our first pass yield for each step was 80%. But overall, our rolled throughput yield was 33%, right? So sometimes we feel good that 80% of our items are correct. But when we look how that goes step after step, we realize we're actually losing quite a bit, right? All of this is scrap, is waste, is stuff that we are losing money on that's hitting our bottom line. So we don't wanna do that. This is a great thing if you have an Etsy store, this is something that's probably happening that you don't even realize. But today we are going to use this example of a cannabis shop. So let's say uh, we were at a cannabis shop and we were growing plants. And of the 100 plants that we purchased, only 85% uh, of those ended up being usable, actually produced. So that would be 85% is our first pass yield. Now in the next step, when we harvested those plants, we got about 1,027 good buds. So when we did that, that 74% actually made it to that next step. Then we went to that next step of uh, selecting which ones were gonna be the best ones for us to be able to send through to be uh, purchased. And we saw that only about 80% of those actually made it to the next step. 
Finally, we see packaging. So this is something that we're maybe a little bit more familiar with, how we're building these packages. So with this, we saw that 97% of our items actually went to the next step. So we didn't lose very much in packaging. But then when we sold them, we found that actually quite a few expired or quite a few didn't meet some of the expectations or weren't stored properly. So we actually had 75% of those that got packaged actually sold. So in the end, for this five-step process, only 37% of our items actually went through to the next step, right? So what we see here, uh, or actually went through the whole process right the first time. So what we can see here is that this has a huge impact on our overall bottom line, right? If you think of all the money that you're spending on your materials, and then thinking of all the places where your products might be losing value across your value stream, this can have a really big impact. Now, what I love about this metric, if you are a Lean Six Sigma person, is it gives you a number. It gives you something you can see change. So you could actually target the one on this that's having the biggest impact, let's say this one that's only at 74%. Maybe you're going to go after that one and you're going to increase that so that next time, let's say you have 1,358. So now you've increased your roll throughput yield to 48%, right? So 48% of your items are going through the process right the first time. So what's wonderful for a Lean Six Sigma person about this is that you do have this number that then you can focus on. You can get a team working around. You can see real change. So I think it's really a fun tool to play with. I think it's a great thing to take a look at some of your processes and just calculate what percentage of your items are going through correct the first time. So look at what percentage of items are going through correctly the first time, and that's going to give you a lot of insight into maybe where you want to focus some of your improvements. Now let's look at for tomorrow what it is that we are going to talk about. We are going to talk about some summary stats. So what are some basic stats that we can help you collect so that you can uh, make some better decisions about your processes. And we're going to use a doctor's office. Now, I'm going to guarantee you that whether you realize it or not, doctor, doctor's offices, healthcare is using a ton of summary stats. So this is a, a good one to think about for tomorrow. As I said, we're coming to the end of the month, which means that we're coming to the end of this series. We'll continue to have uh, little ones here and there, but feel free to join some of our workshops or other events that we have in our event page uh, on Facebook. Um, and uh, YouTube's a great place to get some of these live tutorials as well. Thank you so much. I hope that doing this exercise today can help you get a little bit better each and every day so that you don't have to work so hard.